the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We sing our hymn. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Christians hasten on your way. Heaps up like the water. 
Running water stands like a dam, and the floods turn to solid in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue and catch them. I'll divide the spoil and take my re revenge. I'll draw my sword, my hand will destroy them. You blew your wind, and the seas covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who, Lord, is like you among the gods? Who is like you, wonderful in holiness? Whose glory is to be feared? Who does marvelous things? You stretched out your right hand, and the earth swallowed them. You kindly lead your people. You freed and mightily guide them to your holy dwelling place. Nations hear of it and tremble. Anguish grips the people in Philistia. Edom's chiefs are terrified. Moab's leaders tremble. And all those who live in Canaan melt away. Terror and dread fall on them, still as a stone, till your people, Lord, pass through, till the people you purchase come through. And you will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place where you live, which you, Lord, have made. The holy place your hands, Lord, have established. The Lord will rule forever. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is from Acts chapter 10, beginning with the 34th verse. Then Peter spoke. Now I really understand that God doesn't show favor one person over another. It doesn't matter what people you belong to. If you fear him and do what is right, he accepts you. He sent his word to the people of Israel to bring the news of peace in Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You know what happened in the whole country of the Jews. How after the baptism that John preached, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And Jesus, beginning in Galilee, went around doing good and healing all who were under the tyranny of the devil, because God was with him. We have seen everything he did in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, and we can tell about it. Men hanged him on a cross and killed him, but God raised him up on the third day and showed him to us, not all our people, but to us whom God had chosen to be witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He ordered us to preach to the people and warn them God has appointed him to judge the living and the dead. And all the prophets declare that through his name, everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness for his sins. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel lesson today is in Luke chapter 24, beginning with the 13th verse. On the same day, two of them were walking to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking about everything that happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself joined them and walked with them. They saw him, but were kept from knowing who he was. Why are you, dis what are you discussing as you're walking along, he asked them. They stood still and looked gloomy. Are you the only stranger living in Jerusalem? The one by the name of Cleopas asked him, who doesn't know what happened there these days. What do you mean? he asked. Oh, about Jesus from Nazareth, he told him, who was a prophet mighty in what he did and said before God and all the people, and how our high priest and rulers handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping he would be the one to free Israel. And what is more, this is now the third day since it happened. And then some of our women startled us. They went to the grave early this morning and didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he is alive. And some of our men went to the grave and found it as the women had said, and they didn't see him. How foolish you are, he told them, and how slow to believe everything the prophet said. Didn't Christ have to suffer this and so go to his glory? Then he explained to them, starting with 
Moses and all the prophets, what they said about him and all their writings. And so they came near the village they were going, and he asked them if he were going to go farther. Stay with us, they urged them. It's getting late, and the day is almost gone. So he went in with them. And while he was at the table, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they knew who he was. But he vanished from them. Didn't our hearts glow, they said to each other, as he was talking to us on the way and explaining the Bible to us. That same hour, they started out, went back to Jerusalem, found the eleven who were with them all together. And these said, The Lord really did rise. And Simon saw him. And the two men told what happened on the way and how they recognized him while he was breaking the bread. And while they were talking about what happened, Jesus stood among them. Peace to you, he said to them. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Why are you troubled? He asked them. And why do you have doubts in your minds? Look at my hands, and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones as you see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And they were overcome with joy and amazement because they thought it was too good to be true. Do you have anything to eat? He asked them. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate it while they watched him. While I was still with you, he said to them, I told you everything written about me and the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must come true. And then he opened their minds to understand the Bible. This he told them is what is written. The Christ will suffer and will rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and the forgiveness of sins we preached in my name to all people beginning at Jerusalem. And you will testify of these things. I am sending you him whom my father promised. Wait here in the city until you are armed with power from above. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today our passage for Holy Monday is from our gospel lesson. You know, who would have thought of it? You know, the disciples, these, these two of Jesus' disciples, not the twelve, but two of the other ones, maybe one of maybe two of the seventy-two he had sent out for walking along on the way to Emmaus. And Jesus met them, but they, they were kept from seeing him, from unknowing who he was. He, he, go, he asked, What's going on? You know, uh, it's kind of amazing. You know, Jesus had been telling them, most particularly since the Mount of Transfiguration, that he was going to go to Jerusalem, that he was going to die, and on the third day he was going to rise again. And he told them this many, many times. And it isn't any wonder that in verse 25, you know, after you know the, these two disciples go, haven't you heard? Don't you know? You know, and you know the, the women they went to the grave and it was empty. And the angels they said they saw angels and they said he had risen. And you know when the disciples went, they they didn't see Jesus risen. They saw all they saw was an empty tomb. They were slow to understand. They didn't believe. That he had risen from the dead. They believed that the women said that the grave was empty and that Jesus wasn't there. They didn't understand yet that Jesus had risen from the dead. And here now, you know, Peter, Jesus tells them how foolish you are and how slow to believe everything the prophets said. Didn't Christ have to suffer this and so go to his glory? And then starting with Moses and all the prophets, he explained what it said about him in all their writings. Wouldn't you have loved to have been there? But, you know, we do know some of these things, and we discussed them a little bit last week, you know. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. You know, 
He said, God said to the serpent, you will strike his heel and he will crush your head. And indeed, on Good Friday, the serpent struck Jesus' heel and he died. And as he rose from the dead, Sunday morning, the serpent's head now is crushed. You know, the Abraham said, the Lord will provide a lamb for the sacrifice. And John pointed us out who that lamb was. Behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We saw in the, in the Psalms how God's Holy One would not see the cave and that he would be risen from the dead. We saw in the servant psalms, or servant songs of, of Isaiah, particularly Isaiah 53, but chapter 50 and, and 44 as well, how the Messiah would have to die, how he would be crushed, how he would take on the iniquity of us all, the guilt of us all, and that through his suffering, peace between God and man would be established. You see how Jonah coming out the whale on the third day shows how Christ would rise again from the dead. And maybe it wasn't a whale, big fish. And many, many more prophecies are there if you care to go look. And then finally, they went home, he took bread, he, Jesus uh, he, he broke the bread and, and in breaking the bread their eyes were opened he revealed himself to them and they ran and told the other disciples and then while they were talking Jesus is poof he's there and he says shalom Eliakim peace to you and the, the, the eleven out of there were just as slow as these other two disciples they were terrified, startled. They thought they were seeing a ghost. Didn't Jesus say that he was going to rise from the dead on the third day? Didn't they have the testimony of the women that he was risen? And yet doubts were in their minds. Look at my hands, my feet. Look, there's the scars. It's me. And touch me and see. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones, as you see I have. And just to make sure that they understand that he really was risen from the grave, from the dead. He got something for me to eat. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. And they, he took it, ate it while they watched him. They were probably looking to see whether the fish would look like, just go straight through him or something. But it didn't. He ate it. Because he was real flesh and bone. He was solid. He was truly risen from the dead. And he goes to the same place that he was with the other disciples. I told you everything written about me in the law, the prophet Moses, and the prophets and the Psalms must come true. And then he opens their minds to understand the Bible. And this he told them is what is written. For Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And the repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached his name to all people beginning at Jerusalem. Well, there you go. Our message, the Christian message, pretty concisely put, that Christ suffered and died and rose again. And that he grants us the gift of repentance and the forgiveness of sins in his name. Yes, that, that is what uh, the apostle us over in Acts. He ordered us to preach to the people and warn them that God has appointed him to be the judge of the living and day. And all the prophets declare that through his name, everyone who believes in him receives the forgiveness of for his sins. And so, yes, hopefully now Christ has opened your minds to understand the Bible. And at your minds, Understand and believe, your hearts believe, that God has truly had him rise from the dead 
and raising from the dead, ascended to the Father, he has become the judge of the living and the dead. The dead, those who will not believe in him, who refuse his gift of forgiveness, who refuse the gift of repentance and turning to God and to Christ, and their judgment is everlasting punishment. And the judgment for those who are living, those who have heard the good news of Jesus Christ, believe the good news that in Jesus we have the forgiveness of our sins, and we have eternal life now. We are living now. And on the last day when he returns, he will raise up all the dead. And all who believe in him will be raised to everlasting life. And we who are standing here will be transformed into the very same body that he rose with a new immortal imperishable glorious body into a new heavens and a new earth and a new Jerusalem not not floating around in some cloud like angels we'll be immortal like the angels but we're not going to be bodiless spirits just as Jesus is risen from the dead and shows forth his glory, you too, every one of you who believes Jesus and believes in Jesus and believe that in his name you have the forgiveness of your sins, you too will be raised with new, immortal, glorious bodies bearing the glory of God and living forever with him in his kingdom. May you indeed have your minds open today Believe this and receive this marvelous, immeasurable gift of God's love. May the peace of God be on all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, hear us. Pass the Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, who was crucified for our transgressions and raised for our justification. Have mercy on us who foretold your passion, saying the Son of Man must be crucified and on the third day rise again. Have mercy on us, who destroyed death by dying and by rising to life again, brought life and immortality to life. Have mercy on us, whose resurrection was first announced by an angel to the women. Have mercy on us, who appeared to Mary Magdalene and was worshipped by her. Have mercy on us, who revealed yourself to the two disciples on the Emmaus Road and made yourself known to them in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Have mercy on us, who appeared to the disciples, bestowing on them your peace and your spirit. Have mercy on us, who showed your wounded hands and side to the apostle Thomas, that he too might believe. Have mercy on us, who appeared to seven disciples on the Sea of Tiberias, bringing a miraculous catch of fish. Have mercy on us, who appeared to Peter and to the twelve, to over five hundred disciples, to James and all the apostles, and Paul on the Damascus road. Have mercy on us, who can mission your church to make disciples of all nations by baptizing and teaching them. Have mercy on us, 
By your glorious resurrection from the dead, good Lord, deliver us. By your victory over sin and death, good Lord, deliver us. By the majesty of your risen body, good Lord, deliver us. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, Lord Jesus, that we may daily die and rise with you in our baptism and walk in the freedom of your forgiveness. Grant us, good Lord, that we may set our minds on things above and not on earthly things, serving others as we have been served by you. Grant us, good Lord, that we may dwell with you forever in a new creation as citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem together with all the saints. Grant us, good Lord, Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew. We implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For in your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you always. Amen.